Hello everyone. Example answers to the cell pip speaking test. What is the cell pip speaking test? This test or this portion of the test is about 15 to 20 minutes long and has eight tasks. The eight tasks are as follows. Number one, giving advice. Two, talking about a personal experience. Three, describing a scene. Four, making predictions. Five, comparing and persuading. Six, dealing with a difficult situation. Seven, expressing opinions. Eight, describing an unusual situation. Let's look at an example answer for each task. I will show you each question and then I will show you the answer. Feel free to pause the video before I show the answer so you can attempt to answer it yourself. Task one, giving advice. Your friend does not like to study in her room because she says it is not comfortable. She wants to rearrange the room so that she can study better. Give her some advice on how to create a good study space. Here are some tips. Repeat the question in the introduction of your answer. Think of three things you could change about your own room and think of reasons why those changes might be good. Summarize your opinions in the conclusion of your answer. I want to give you some advice on how to create a better study place. I think that you can rearrange the room so that you can study better. If you take my advice, your room may be more comfortable. First, I think that you can replace the curtains. I know that your favorite color is yellow, so perhaps you can buy yellow curtains. These will make you feel happier and make the room brighter. Next, you can paint the walls. You can choose a color which you like. If you paint the walls, it will give the room an entirely new feeling. Finally, I think you can rearrange the furniture. Perhaps you could move your desk closer to the window or move your bed into the corner. There are many ways to rearrange your furniture. The benefit of this is that the room will have a new feeling. All of these things can help you feel more comfortable in your room and allow you to have a good study space. Task two, personal experience. Talk about a great time you had with a family member or friend. Maybe you can talk about a party, something you did together at school, a time you traveled with a friend, or anything else you can remember. What happened and why was it memorable? Here are some tips. Try to be real. Your answer will sound more natural if it is based on real memories. Think of three things that you liked about the experience. Describe those things and say why they were meaningful. Summarize your memories in the conclusion. Feel free to answer the question by yourself before I show you the example. When I was 24 years old, I went to visit my friend in Iceland. He had been studying at the University of Iceland for two years when I decided to go and visit. Since he was graduating, we went on a celebratory trip around the island. In Iceland, there is a road which circles all the, way, all the way around the island. It is called Ring Road. We rented a car and some tents and made our way around the coast, stopping each night at a new campsite. It was a memorable experience because we saw many beautiful natural landscapes and enjoyed relaxing evenings under the stars. It was an adventure of a lifetime. This is why it is a memorable experience for me. Task three, describing a scene. Here's the scene.
Some tips. General information. Where is it? What do you see? In the body, be more specific. What kind of food is there? What is in the background? How is the weather? Summarize your observations in different words in the conclusion. Now you should spend some time looking at the picture and try to describe it by yourself first. So pause the video now. Okay, I'm going to show you my answer. So try to remember what you can see. I can see seven people having a picnic in the park. It is a charming scene. It appears to be a group of close friends and they appear to be enjoying themselves. Five of the people are sitting on a blanket around a selection of foods. One of them is standing up and one man is bending over and whispering something into one of the girl's ears. Due to the fact that she is clearly laughing, we can reasonably assume that the man is telling her a funny joke. As for the food, it is not entirely clear to see. However, since it is a picnic, I can infer that there are some sandwiches, cheese, vegetables, and I can clearly see some bottles of water. In the background of the scene, I can see grass on the rolling hills, a couple of trees, and some beautiful Christmas lights hanging from the tree branches. It is a remarkable image and it makes me eager to go on a picnic. Task four, making predictions. Look at the picture and tell me what will happen next. Here are some tips. Begin by giving a brief description of the image. Try to make about three predictions as to what will happen next and give reasons for why you think those things will happen. And summarize by making a concluding comment or adding a new and intriguing bit of analysis. Same as last time, spend some time looking at the picture and try to describe it by yourself. Pause the video. And I'm back. If you are ready, I'll show you my answer. picture appears to show a family of three on Christmas morning. The mother, father, and son are all sitting on a white couch wearing matching pajamas and Santa hats. I predict that the boy will soon be happily opening the green present on his lap. After that, the parents will probably open presents as well. I can see a green present beside the mother's left arm. Since it is Christmas morning, we can safely assume that the family will have a delicious breakfast. Usually, people have cinnamon buns or some other festive dish on Christmas morning. You can also predict that they will visit their extended family sometime in the afternoon. People often get together with their aunts, uncles, and grandparents on Christmas Day. I think this picture shows a classic festive scene, and I predict that this family will have a wonderful day. Task 5. Comparing and Persuading Here's the situation. There is a lot of noise outside your company's office building, and you have three options. You can have your employees wear earplugs. You can build a brick wall to stop the noise, or you can plant a hedge. A hedge is um, kind of like a tree or a bush, and it will block the noise. So which is the best option? Tips. Think about what you would do in real life. Think about the pros and cons of each, of each option. Make a decision based on your opinion of the value of the pros and cons. Speak clearly and succinctly. I chose the hedge. I think that the best option is to plant a hedge. I have a few reasons for this opinion. Overall, planting a hedge will be better than using earplugs. My first reason is that planting a hedge is good for the environment. We all know that our environment is suffering. So if, we, uh, if everyone plants something green on their property, the environment will improve. The second reason is that the hedge is green and beautiful. When people walk by your company, they will be impressed by the view. This may increase the value of your property. 
Um, the earplugs may be a good short-term option. They are cheap and effective, but you do not want to use earplugs forever. The hedge will take five years to grow. If you plant the hedge now, you will be happy in five years. My conclusion is that you can use earplugs temporarily, but that planting the hedge is the best long-term solution. Task six, dealing with difficult situations. Here's the situation, folks. Your boss hired a new employee, John, and asked you and your coworkers, Callie and Liz, to train him. After one month, John keeps making mistakes and is not listening to your feedback. Callie thinks that you should explain to your boss why John should be fired. Liz thinks that you should try talking to John again and tell him why he needs to do better. What would you do? Would you listen to Callie or would you listen to Liz? Tips. Ask yourself, has this situation ever happened to you? Try to figure out your own values and your ethics. What is right and what is wrong in your mind? Use two or three arguments. So, everyone deserves a second chance. So I will talk to... Everyone deserves a second chance. So I will talk to Callie about talking to John one more time. I think that we can help John by teaching him what is right and wrong and pointing out his mistakes. I like John because he is young and doesn't have enough work experience, but he is kind and smart. If we teach John, he will improve his situation. Firing someone is bad because it shows that we did not do our best to help them. Helping people is better than firing them. For these reasons, I think we should talk to John one more time. Task seven, expressing opinions. Here's the question. Do you think that young adults should pay rent to their parents if they do not move out by the age of 21? Explain your reasons. What is your opinion? And remember, whichever side you pick, you have to have two or three solid arguments, what we call rock solid arguments. And describe each argument in the body paragraph. You can make a definitive conclusion. So what do you think? Do you think young adults should pay rent to their parents if they do not move out by the age of 21? Well, in my opinion, I think that young adults should pay rent to their parents if they do not move out by the age of 21. I have three reasons for this. Firstly, young adults at the age of 21 usually have a job. They can use the money they earn from this job to pay rent to their parents. The second reason is that young adults must learn responsibility. They should understand that adults need to pay rent. This can make them more mature and independent. The third reason is that it is good for society. If young adults become mature and responsible, they will be able to do good things for society in the future. They will think independently and be disciplined. In conclusion, I think that young adults should pay rent to their parents if they do not move out by the age of 21 because they have jobs, it teaches them to be responsible, and it is good for society. Task 8. Describing an unusual situation. You are at an art gallery and see an unusual painting. You call your friend to describe it. This is the painting. It's quite unusual, isn't it? Focus on concrete items which you can describe in simple terms. Try to avoid abstract and confusing language. Don't worry about being profound. Just say something simple and clear. Here's my answer. Hello, Paula. I'm at the art gallery now. I can see an unusual picture and I want to tell you about it. At first glance, it seems to portray an ordinary living room. When I looked closer, however, 
I can see that everything is odd. The sofa is propped up against the wall so that it is diagonal. The plant is upside down. It is in a pot resting on the ceiling. Some of the paintings on the wall are not straight. They are slightly off center. This image makes me think of the effect of disrupting normalcy. When we see a living room, we expect everything to be normal. When a few things are abnormal, the resulting image is quite jarring. What do you think about this painting? I will send you a photo. So there you have it, folks. Those are the eight tasks for CellPip. And those were my example answers. I encourage you to go through the slides once more and answer each task on your own. Good luck studying. I'm sure you're going to do great on your exam. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I respond to all the comments and subscribe and like the video. And I hope to see you next time.